On today's video, I'll be taking you with me on a trip to photograph diving gannets. I took this trip at the beginning of August and it was with a company called Yorkshire Coast Nature. I'll be sharing some tips and tricks that I learned from the experience, what camera gear I'd recommend, and some of my favourite photos from the trip with what I think worked well and what didn't. But first, for the way there. There were 12 of us on this trip, and whilst it's not a big boat, there still felt like there was plenty of space for us all. From memory, it was around a 45 minute trip out to the Gannet Colony. On the way there, there were plenty of birds to see flying and floating on the water. Fulmer, guillemots, razorbills, and earlier in the season, there are plenty of kittiwakes too. As you start getting closer to the colony, you start seeing more and more gannets around until the colony is in view. The skipper then took us in for a closer view of the colony and for anyone who's visited Bempton Cliffs before, you'll appreciate just how much of a privilege it is to get to see the colony from this vantage point. And after all that lovely calm, now it's time for the chaos. So whilst you enjoy some slow motion footage of the gannet feeding frenzy, I'll talk you through what gear and settings I'd recommend. If you have it, I would take two of the same camera body, one with a smaller telephoto, so a 70 to 200 millimeter type lens, possibly with a 1.4 times extender, and one with a wide angle lens. I used my 40 to 150 millimeter f2.8, without an extender, and my 12 to 40 mm f2.8. Now, unfortunately, I don't have two OM-1 bodies, so I switch lenses halfway through to experiment with different shots. Your camera settings will obviously depend on the conditions you have on the day, but I was almost only shooting wide open, so that's the lowest F number available. My ISO was around 800 for the whole session, and I would change the shutter speed depending on how much light was available at the time. But my shutter speed never dipped below a 3,200th of a second. And for the focusing mode, I had a small box with Bird AI autofocus enabled. One key for the settings is just to remember not to clip the highlights, as the white feathers can easily get overexposed here. Now, for the first lot of images, these were mostly taken at 150 millimeters. So these are all the tighter portrait shots and probably my favorites from this session. The key for the shots of the birds squabbling over fish was to follow where the fish is being thrown into the water to give your camera the best chance at focusing. And for diving photos, you need to try and anticipate which bird is going to dive into the water. Lock onto that bird and follow it as it dives. It can be a little easier to zoom out a bit and crop in post, as this will mean it is easier for you to keep the bird in the frame. The next group of photos were taken within a zoom range of 40mm to 100mm, 
and this allowed for a bit more space around the action, managing to get in a few more birds into the shots to give a bit more context and showing that there are numerous birds here. I think my favourites are the photos that include birds that are flying down towards birds that are already on the water. There's also some interest to the shots that include plenty of white water splashes on the edges of the photos, as, like I said before, it can add some context to the photo. But in general, I'm not sure any of these are overly inspiring. Not bad, but not fantastic. Now for the wide-angle photos. These were taken within a range of 12mm to around 30mm. First are the wider range, and I struggled a bit with these. I like the fact that you can get both diving birds and a sky full of birds within the frame. And in a few instances this worked well, but the fact that there are so many birds in the frame means that you can struggle to pick out a subject within the photo, and to me it all just feels a little bit messy. Now for the photos around 30mm, I think these worked a lot better as the slightly tighter shots means that there's more emphasis on the diving birds. My favourites here are when there are diving gannets closer to the camera with a sky of gannets further away and in my opinion the eye is drawn to the diving birds and then the context is given by the birds in the background. So there you go, it was an absolutely thrilling experience, albeit extremely frantic. I came back with thousands of photos, all in all I'm very pleased with the results. My advice would be to try and book onto two boat trips, that way you can get your eye in with the first session and then figure out exactly what photos you're going to be trying for with the second trip. And that's it for this video, if you did enjoy then it would be great if you could drop a like, comment and subscribe if you haven't already done so. But for now, thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers!